What is it, sweetie? Did you see a scary picture in your picture book? That was last year's taxes. You have to pay again this year. No, because you see, I went ahead and year wise, I was counting forward from the last previous. Go! Oh! Tax season is upon us once again. This is the time of year where very charitable citizens dig deep and make charitable donations to their respective governments. Well, if you're a public company, those tax returns are public information. And oh boy, Disney's taxes just started hitting the interwebs. It appears that Disney is in dire financial straits. But exactly how bad is Disney doing financially? And what does this mean for the future of Star Wars and the MCU? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is Disney. It's no secret that Bob Iger is pretty bad at his job. It's quite a shame because he did a decent job over a decade ago, or so it seemed. Bob Iger let Kathleen Kennedy run wild off her leash and she invited a pack of rabid dogs to infect the company with progressive ideologies. So one could argue that this was Bob Iger's greatest failure. And as Bob Iger is about to find out, actions have consequences. In this video, I'm going to go over three massive problems facing Disney in 2024. First, it's no secret that Disney has already been in a terrible position over the last few years. They've released quite the number of massive flops in no specific order. Elemental, Ant-Man 3, The Marvels, Indiana Jones, and The Dial of Dumbasses, Strange World, Mulan, Jungle Cruise, Turning Red, and Lightyear are just some of the massive flops Disney has had in the past few years. And now it's being reported that Disney investors are looking to sue the company for not accurately disclosing their finances. Forbes put out an article detailing Disney's tax disclosures in the UK, and it's not looking pretty. It looks like they lost a lot more money than was previously thought. According to the article, quote, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny failed to cover its costs at the box office, according to financial statements released on Friday, which show that Disney spent $134.2 million more on making the movie than it is understood to have received in ticket sales. So let's step back into grade school math class for a second. This means that they couldn't cover their production budget, which Google tells me was $295 million. That means their film only made $161 million and failed to even clear the $200 million mark. And let's not forget the marketing budget, which basically equals the production cost. We don't yet know how much the marketing cost is, but it sure as shit will drive up the losses. It seems that the Wolf of Wall Street has become the big bad wolf of Disney and other Hollywood studios. Investors are claiming that these studios aren't reporting how much money they're really making. Now, to anyone who isn't my man Legal Eagle or Big Daddy j Pow, this would constitute fraud. It turns out that misreporting tax documents is a huge no-no. Just ask Al Capone. You can literally kill whoever you want. You just have to pay your taxes. And it seems that Disney has been a naughty little boy. I'm a bad little boy. It's no surprise investors are royally pissed off. How would you feel if you were giving money to a company and they were committing tax fraud? The second problem plaguing Disney is the proxy fight with Nelson Peltz, which happened this week and has been a major thorn in Bob Iger's side for quite some time. Activist investor Nelson Peltz was exactly just that pissed off investor, and he led the charge to get a couple of seats on Disney's board. Even though he failed to secure those board seats, this significantly weakened Disney because they had to devote resources to fight him off. Now, I won't bore you with the legalese, but apparently what's going on behind the scenes is a full-out war. Bob Iger has employed Publicis Imagine, a media public relations company. Now, hiring a PR firm is nothing new, but what we found out is that Publicis Image has been going after Nelson Peltz hard in the legacy media. They tried to paint him as some guy who knows nothing about the business Disney is engaged in. This smear campaign is par for the course for these cancel culture nutbags that adhere to woke ideology. They're doing everything they can to maintain their power and protect the power structure that's allowed progressive ideology to infect many people at Disney. The third problem Disney is facing is a taste of their own medicine. 
In adhering to toxic DEI standards, Disney has engaged in, shall we say, questionable hiring and firing practices. In adhering to toxic DEI standards, Disney has engaged in, shall we say, questionable hiring and firing practices. In order to get that sweet, sweet ESG money, they've engaged in horribly racist hiring practices. Some people are now claiming that they've been unjustly targeted and fired as well. The most famous example of Disney's questionable HR policies was Gina Carano. She dared voice the hypocrisy of Disney's golden boy, Pedro Pascal, and was promptly fired from a role that, quite frankly, she excelled at. All the fans actually loved Cara Dune. She was a strong female character done right. But because her political views didn't align with the prevailing progressive messaging the company was going for, they had to get rid of her. I wonder what Legal Eagle would say about this, but it's looking like a case of wrongful termination, and I'm not the only one who thinks that. Iron Man himself, Elon Musk, agrees with Gina Carano and is funding her legal case. This is yet another front that Disney needs to defend on in this three-pronged attack. Elon Musk isn't stupid, so not only is he backing Gina Carano, but he is also in cahoots with Nelson Peltz, and this fight is far from over. The way this is looking, they're trying to destabilize leadership at Disney in order to come in and completely take over the company. Elon Musk made a very strong allusion to this being the case when he said he was looking for companies to buy. And let's not forget that Musk is no fan of Bob Iger. Go yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. So has anyone ever successfully defended against a multi-pronged attack? I mean, examples do exist from within the asymmetric warfare sphere, but it's damn tough. Disney is being sued by investors claiming financial statement fraud, which could possibly invite the scrutiny from the SEC. And we all know how that always turns out. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Fraud, especially tax fraud, has brought down some of the finest criminals we've ever seen. So investors forcing this Pandora's box open don't yet fully know the ramifications of what this could reveal. So we'll just have to wait and see with that. As far as Disney's proxy vote, Nelson Peltz and Elon Musk teaming up, and the Gina Carano lawsuit go, Disney has its hands full defending the absolute onslaught coming. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think Disney will unstick itself like the Teflon Don has done many times before? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.